hi ho folks and welcome back to the adventures of Turnwinkle, the gnome mage. Well, hi Turnwinkle. Hi there. Are you all set for today, sir? Indubitably. Well, great, because today we are going to talk to an awesome couple about their in-game relationship. That's right, we're going to talk about the do's, the don'ts to in-game relationships, and what you can expect out of your in-game relationship, if you're wanting to get into one, that is. And so without any further ado, let us go meet this awesome awesome couple. Alrighty folks, well we've come out here to the East Vale Logging Camp, a place where, you know, again they, they really enjoy it. It really exemplifies kind of the Elwyn Stormwind living and right over here, <laughs> right over here, and you know, I don't know if it actually exemplifies that at all, but <laughs> the scenery is nice and it's a nice area, is it not guys? It's beautiful, yes. <laughs> it's lovely. That's right, folks. So here we have our lovely couple here tonight talking about in-game relationships and specifically their own and their experiences in one. And so right off the bat, and ma'am, we'll have you introduce your character here. Uh, this is Lady Vinifica Wilson. Uh, she's the owner of House Alon Imports and the Lady of House of Alon. Oh, okay. Awesome. And you, sir? Uh, this is Lord Dr. Brian Wilson, and he is the Lord of House Alon. House Alon. All right, excellent. And so, now ma'am, how long have you been playing WoW? I have been playing WoW since the beta for Vanilla. Oh, wow. Okay, so even before Vanilla was a thing, uh, you were in. I was. And what sold you on the game? Uh, funny enough, I do a lot of tabletop and LARP, and uh, a large amount of members got in the beta and got me a beta key, and I had never done an MMO before. Oh, okay, excellent. And you, sir, how long have you been playing World of Warcraft? Well, I feel completely outclassed now. Um, <laughs> I've been playing WoW since um, Wrath of the Lich King. I'm a Lich King child, and I became interested in it because it I think I saw a Super Bowl advertisement or something wow. with, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? For like a uh, Toyota, like a Toyota truck that like, you know, erupted out of a boss's mouth. I swear to God that happened. <laughs> Wilson's seventh birthday is next month, like a week from today, actually, or no, yeah, a week from today. So I guess that's next week, but at any rate, so yeah, that's exciting. Okay, so how long have you been playing? Well, I guess for about seven years then, correct? Yes, sir. And you've been playing Wilson for that entire time? Yes, my first character, and I've been RPing him for about a year. About a year? Yes. Oh, excellent. And you, ma'am, how long have you been role-playing in the game? And how long have you been role-playing uh, Benefica? I actually didn't start role-play until probably the beginning end of 2010 um, I had been a raider and a pvp -er on a different server and a friend talked me into coming to Wormrest Accord. Venny was the character I came over and RP'd with in a different guild and a different storyline. She uh, isn't my main but she's my secondary main I guess you could say. I picked her back up again a little over a year ago. Um, she's a very fun character to play but I've been RPing now since about 2010. Oh, okay, excellent. So there you go, folks. They've been playing the game since, well, pretty much the beginning and have been role-playing for quite a few years. So with that, when we come back, we're going to find out a little bit more about their characters that they have right here and right now. And so we're going to get their storylines, and then we're going to start talking about how these two met. So we'll be right back with that. Alrighty, folks. Well, we found a nice, nice place to sit here and discuss a little bit about their characters. And so we'll start with you, Mr. Wilson. So, sir, give us a brief synopsis of what the storyline is behind uh, Lord Brian Wilson. Absolutely. So, Wilson started out as an orphan. He was picked up by Ravenholt on a salvaging mission in Tolbarad. You know, had to pickpocket his way through Stromgard. He had a falling out with them when they wanted him to do their bidding and he kind of had a philosophical 
difference. So he ended up actually here in Eastvale and then took up the cause in Northrend, you know, fought as a soldier, as an irregular, and then didn't like the path that he was going down. So he got interested in archaeology because he saw the, the effect that Serenite had on people, their armor, you know, during the Lich King campaign. And he wanted to know why. Then he went to Pandaria, studied at the monasteries, achieved balance, and then he found the Conclave. And he came to the Conclave, and then he met Venny. All right, awesome. Well done, sir. And so, uh, Venny... Go ahead and give us a synopsis of your character. And I want to know why you have the nickname Tornado. Oh my gosh. All right. We're going to start. Venny is Kulteran. She is the bastard child of a noble house. Along the way, she basically struck out on her own at a very, very young age, considering, you know, she pretty much ran away. She's brilliant with math. She basically started her own trading group, started dealing with mining and trade and minerals. She then made her way into Stormwind and had basically built her own fortune. She got involved with several military groups. She became a battle mage, which means you know she's not always into the scholarly pursu uh, pursuits of being a mage, but she's kind of like that flash in the pan on the battlefield kind of mage. From there, she had several romantic failings <laughs> several she found herself at the conclave when it was still the conclave of azora she did get married previously to their warden and unfortunately he died at the at the opening of warlords of draenor uh, in the mass battle that took place there she does have a son already and she basically helps with diplomatic affairs and, uh, you know, runs her own business. She's pretty much a self-made person. And, and the nickname Tornado has both appropriate and inappropriate meanings. So the wow. appropriate <laughs> meaning I will share with your, your listeners is that she, she, when she hits a battlefield, she really just kind of loses herself and goes. Okay. And when we stop recording, I'll find out what the other is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. So when we come back, we're going to talk about how these two met in character and how they decided to allow their characters to start an in-game relationship in real life. So we'll come right back with that. All right, folks. And we are back. And so, Venny, here you are. You're doing great. And Wilson walks in. How do you guys meet in game? Oh, well, that's actually um, pretty comical. Vinifica at the time was going through a lot of difficult issues in her life. She was dealing with a lot of circumstances that were due to intel and all sorts of things. She's a diplomatic attache at the time. She had had a horrible day, was storming back into the command center where we spend some of our time as a guild and she ran into a new recruit and decided that that this poor sob was going <laughs> to be tormented one way or another because she needed to take it out on somebody she walked up got this haughty attitude with him which in reality benny's a marshmallow and like the sweetest person ever <laughs> but she got all haughty and noble on him and stormed up and just stared him in the eye and started like giving him the oddest questions like she was a spanish inquisition and she just started messing with this poor guy who had been in the guild for two days and it it was hilarious and she caught him completely off guard and it it was really sweet and it was very funny <laughs> okay okay so uh, mr wilson your your second day in the guild you happen to be in the the guild hall as it were and Venny walks up to you. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, I was complete. I was completely taken off guard, and you know, as like oh, Ocelli taken off guard. I was like, what the heck is going on here? And then like I see Lee, Wilson is completely clueless when it, when it comes to <laughs> relationships. Um, completely inexperienced, uh, naive, and he was just like, yeah, I'm just gonna like 
talk to this person because she seems interesting. So he just talks to her and completely oblivious to everything. And at the same time, he was really kind of taken with her overall attitude and really impressed with the way that she carried herself. And he thought to himself, and then he told her later on, I'm completely intimidated by you and I'm fairly certain that you could kill me like right now if you <laughs> wanted to. And then they decided to go out for drinks and he was more than impressed with the fact that she could keep up with him drink for drink. And then they just started talking like pretty much all the time. All right. Now, out of character, did you guys discuss maybe starting an in-game relationship with the characters or was this just a random role play between the two of you? I think it was really random. It was just like, oh, hey, there's the new guy. And, you know, I like to interact with everyone that comes in the guild because Congo is a really friendly guild. And we every time there's a new person, unfortunately, we bombard them. So it either scares them off or makes them stay forever. But um, <laughs> we, uh, I was just like, I really want to get to know, like, this guy who just joined. And so we just open RP. It, there was nothing planned. I mean, I think there's a time and place for planning, but I also think there's, you know, I like to let role play just happen. I, I don't want to have it all mapped out. I know some people do, and I mean, that's that's their thing. But for me, I, I prefer just to see where stuff goes. And if it gets uh, really involved, then you take a step back and have a conversation and play, hey, wouldn't it be great if this happened? I mean, we also just don't jump right in. You know, it's like, I like to have wow relationships develop as a real relationship would, and that's over time. Oh, excellent. And you, sir, what were your thoughts when, you know, you're just brand new to a guild? I mean, had you done RP relationships before in the past? No, you know, I mean, it was, this is complete undiscovered territory for me, I, C. Lee, and then him, O, O, C. Lee, or rather, I, C. Lee as well but it did develop naturally because you know, Kristen and I both became friends Ooseely and I think that that's the most important thing is just clear and open communication like as friends and that's what it was all about that this is what's going on with our characters like we allow our characters to do this all righty and so folks when we come back we're going to talk about the first official date and how that went and who asked who and talk about how the relationship progressed. And so we'll be right back with that. Alrighty, folks, and we are back. And right now, the couple have met in the game, a great meeting, and they've talked a little bit out of character. And now, uh, things have progressed. And so, Vinny, what happens next? How do you guys go on a date? What do you guys do? <laughs> Dating in the Conclave. <laughs> We don't really have time for dates. We're usually uh, knee deep, walking through a swamp, hunting cultists. Um, <laughs> there's really, there's really no time. We start with maybe a, a drink out, and then our communication stones go off. Either someone's trying to kill someone, or we're out running about on missions, or we find ourselves out in Draenor on a four-month campaign. Uh, so you, you you try to find personal moments to talk and be with your significant other, but um, the Conclave life is a is a artifact hunter, military life. And there's really not a lot of downtime. I mean, we've tried, right? Yeah, we, we, have, we have tried. <laughs> so, I mean, did you at any time get like five seconds to maybe like go on a picnic or... Yeah, I mean, we, we've tra you know, we spent, had a few dinners in Dalaran, and they were all interrupted by the Comstone. But um, <laughs> we, we've had moments where we've tried to, like, go out and have a few drinks, or we spend a lot of time in the cathedral just for some quiet time together, and it's, it's a very hectic life. Now, Brian, talking out of character, did you find yourself going, hey, let's do more with our characters together? Were you finding that you were spending more time with Venny than other characters in the guild? And what was the guild's reaction? Did they notice the relationship forming? <laughs> you know, there, I mean, there was suspicion. Um, <laughs> that was actually something that I do remember a question that 
Chris Ann had to, f- to field at one point was, what's the nature of the relationship between Vinifica and Wilson? And then she said, as Vanny, well, she views Wilson as a very special friend that she can actually relate to. And I think that that was probably the best way to, to put it, right? Because like the two of them would go to the Brawlers Guild on Fridays. Like that's what the, that was their idea of a date. So what did they spend more time together? Yeah, I mean, I think that that would be a fair assessment. But at the same time, still they still manage to bond with other guild mates as well in the process. Now, Vinny, as you were doing this, did you guys ever come out and say we're, when did you come out and say we're a couple? I don't think they actually purposely went around to hide it, but at some point, it was like several months in when they were finally admitting to other people, because they're both very private people, or they're both very, I guess cagey is the best word sometimes when it comes to disclosing how they feel. Um, They've both kind of had some awful emotional turmoil in their past, so they don't really talk often about these sorts of things. It just progressed, and everyone just got used to them being together. It was never frowned upon. It was never, you know, no one ever questioned it. I mean, there are other people within the guild, and like any other guild, that do form bonds, either through friendship or in-game romantic interests. And it's not unnatural. I don't think Brian and I ever let it affect us in any real way. I mean, we always had them together, but we're always interacting with our friends inside and outside the guild. I have other characters I do play that I, you know, are part of the runnings of the Conclave. So, you know, it's there's always a balance, and as long as you don't let that balance slip, and you don't like live and breathe that storyline. There's room for everything, and I think the more people you bring into your into your relationship, the more fruitful it does become because people become part of your story. And it, there's a lot of memories and happiness when I look back over how they became husband and wife. Well, that's an excellent point, isn't it? Because uh, sometimes you'll see these relationships that turn into an all exclusive thing, and they don't much like you were just talking about they don't let anybody else in there and they almost become too obsessive with just that one storyline and they forget everything that's going around them exactly and it's i think it's really in it, it, that's people's you know their 15 dollars a month is their 15 dollars a month but at the same time like i think people shortchange themselves too much when they put everything into a relationship and don't share it they don't share the RP, they don't share the experience, they don't share stories, because that just makes a really closed RP environment, and eventually you're going to run out of stuff to talk about. <laughs> right, and what happens, Brian, if that partner ends up quitting the game or something? That's really valid point. I have thought about that, like, what would happen if either that or, God forbid, Venny died. Um, that would be very difficult for Wilson. I think some of the more interesting interactions have come when Wilson went around and asked permission, essentially, if he could marry Venny. And a lot of the reactions were actually like, sure, but if you hurt her, I'll kill you. Like he heard that. <laughs> wow. like, he heard that from like four different people. Yeah. So <laughs> it's far more rewarding to go around and speak to other people about your relationship. In my in my opinion, just because or, and involve other people in the relationship, just because you never know what kind of reaction you're gonna get. <laughs> exactly. I mean, we. Brian and I both have seen relationships like in RP where, you know, you'll have this person in your life and then they'll get into a romantic RP relationship and they're just gone. You're like, they're, they're, they're sitting around, they're having their own storyline and they stop interacting with a group. And it, it you know, it's kind of saddens people in a way because, you know, they love interacting with those people who are now only interacting with themselves. And I mean, having an RP partner quit it does stink, but you know, unfortunately, real life needs to come first, or a storyline sometimes comes to an end, and you just have to figure out a way to move on, or maybe take a little break from that character until you kind of regroup your thoughts on where their story would go without their RP partner. It's it's hard, it, you know, because you fall in love with these characters sometimes, 
but you know you have to you have to be able to move through it all right well excellent so folks so far we've heard all the happy and the joy but next we'll discuss coming up next we'll discuss boy what happens were there any hard times and we'll get into that so we'll be right back with that Alrighty, folks, we are back. Everything's been going great with the relationship. Now, Vinny, were there any issues, any downtimes with the relationship? Between the two of them, no. But since the beginning of their relationship, have had a lot of external and internal strife regarding the plots that are happening around them. Wilson met Vinny when she was dealing with some highly stressful political and cult infiltration issues where she was trying to get out from all of that and she was actually her her physical being was in danger oh my gosh yeah it was it was pretty bad and it it, it was it was a very fun plot line that it started to go too far and i just had to like go okay we're done now <laughs> uh then currently there was an incident in the desert and some members may or may not have in an accidental um i don't know how to say it but uh, some alliance soldiers were killed in the desert at at the hands of some members and there's a huge tribunal going on internally in our plot line it's been an up and down thing and unfortunately brian is kind of at the heart of it as he was leading the mission and so it's it's kind of it's it's kind of been rough on them but it's it's made them stronger in the process and brought them closer together. Okay. And they've learned to rely on each other solely and completely. Awesome. Now, Brian, was there anyone vying for Benny's affection at any point? I would not be surprised. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that there's a death knight that keeps coming around as of late if i recall Ah. like in the past couple weeks who's been just kind of flirting with with van in cathedral square you know blink Um, is an amazing spell just blink away (laughs) yeah (laughs) but no you know i mean at least within our guild or anything that i've seen like you know people have been really respectful in regards to the relationship so I wouldn't. I wouldn't say there are any other suitors or wooers or anything like. That. So you haven't had to duel anyone then. No, although funny <laughs> story, right? Like one of the first times that that he ever saw her, like in action, like she was in a duel, and then he, you know, had to take care of her. I didn't have to, but I mean, he did because he already cared for her quite a bit. So. Okay. Awesome. Now, who asked who to get married? So she brought it up course because she's a nudge and um and then uh in the end he asked her officially all right and so you say yes right away oh yeah she totally did <laughs> okay great. she's like yes yes with sugar on top let's do this now brian how long did you prepare the proposal did it take you a while did you what what did you do to propose where were you i think that was our picnic that we had in Dalaran, if i recall correctly yes that that is exactly yeah, and uh, we were there, and I I wouldn't say it was like a you know terribly thought out moment, but it it was romantic nonetheless. And you know we were supposed to get married. Wilson and Benny were supposed to get married there in the beginning of October, but then deployment happened, and lasted for like two months. <laughs> right. Actually, lasted for two months, and then we came back and got married in the very beginning of January. Which, you know, I missed, and I'm, I'm just still kicking myself for missing. Now, how long did it take you guys to prepare that out of character, get that wedding all set up? Well, let's see. I know that we had done a little groundwork before the deployment when we had originally tried to get married in the beginning of October, and then this was a, a little bit rushed to for plot purposes. It's like a solid couple of weeks of just kind of making sure everybody was invited and Brian put together the playlist and locations and, you know, we were trying to figure out outfits and who's in the wedding. And I mean, it was you know, off and on here and there. Um, unfortunately, with the guild's heavy, you know, the heavy schedule, there's usually something running almost every single night. So it's you got to kind of get things done when you can. A lot of late night, a lot of late night mumble rambling of what are we doing again? What's right. happening? <laughs> 
All right, the wedding day comes. How did it go, Brian? The the event went really, really well. Right now, Wilson is wearing his his wedding attire, so that that is what he looked like. And uh, if you wish to see like the wedding invite and the save the date, that's all up on um, Wilson and Benny's pages on Tumblr, for the record. As is the playlist, so you can check that out too. But the event went really well. We had a, a pretty good turnout. I would say upwards of 30 people yeah. between our guild and then Sapphire Crusade and Oath Sworn showed up. There were some unfortunate trolls because we had it in uh, Gilneas Cathedral there and it was cross zone. So people from, you know, Moonguard came and did their Moonguard thing. And then we moved to Cathedral in Stormwind and it was far more respectful actually. And, and we really, really appreciated that. We even had some people that were not part of the raid group show up and just watch. And it was really, really awesome. Oh, great. And so folks, when we come back, we're going to get some advice for you folks out there. If you're considering or wanting to do an in-game relationship, from these two so we'll be right back with that alrighty folks and we are back and so you guys have had a great great example of what it is to have an in-game relationship and have it be a fun and rewarding experience now starting with Brian Brian what is some advice that you would have for somebody who's watching this and goes man that's what I would like to do in the game you know, I would say communication is key. Just be open and honest with your RP partner. Be upfront and remember that it's your characters. It's your characters that are guiding what's happening. And they're your friend too. Like Oseli, that's your friend. And that's why you have to be open and honest with them. That's what I would say. Okay, excellent. And Vinny, what do you have to say? I, like I said, I, I completely agree with communication. You know, RP is one thing, but... Uh... Also, make sure that um, the person that you do end up in an RP relationship with is somebody you can know and trust. I've seen a lot of relationships start out and then personalities go awry or it's a predatory issue or some people develop feelings or, you know, and other people don't. I, I've seen it. I've seen some bad examples out there, but it's all about communication and trust. If you cannot trust your RP partner, then that's probably not the person for you. Every day walk up is great and everything, but I mean, I trust the members of my guild because, you know, it's, there is a screening process to be a part of us. So, and then I got to know Brian very well and he is a, he's an amazing friend and I, I feel comfortable with him. So basically if you don't, if you can't trust or be comfortable with that person in a casual conversation, then that's probably not the RP partner for you. But when you do find that person who's like your really good friend and you can do, you know, say anything to and hang out with, and that's great. And, you know, just always talk about how you're feeling, where you want your characters to go. And that's, that's key to making it work. Well, that is some great, great advice, guys. Now, before I let you go, Brian, looking into your crystal ball, what, in your opinion, is the future for the Wellsons here? There is baby Wellson on the way right now, so that's exciting. Assuming that nothing terrible happens to Wellson in Mr. Dr. Lord Wellson there in the, in the immediate future, I think that they will have a very happy and lasting relationship that will only strengthen over time because they do rely on one another and trust one another so much. Okay. And Vinny, what do you see for you two? I actually really, I mean, I see the same thing. I mean, they're, they are partners and in love and they pretty much agree on several points. They have the same thought process for the most part. They want to grow a family. They want stability in a life that has been very unstable for them both most of their lives. They want to give the son they have now and the son, you know, the child on the way, a kind of almost a fairy tale life because their childhoods were both horrible. So they're they're looking for the fairy tale ending. Whether or not that happens, we'll see. Because you know the world is not perfect out there, but right, Le I hope legions, it does. legions coming. So <laughs> legion, the legion is coming, and I don't know if. 
I don't I don't know how that's going to work out. Right. Oh, you're killing me, man. It's all the anxiety, right? <laughs> wow, right. All right, guys. Well, thank you both so very much for talking with us tonight about in-game relationships. Thank you for having us, Terwinkle. It's always a pleasure. Thank you kindly. You bet, folks. So there you have it. In-game relationships really boil down to in-game and out-of-game communication and having fun. And really, in-game relationships are something that can be really fulfilling as far as role play is concerned because there is so much emotion in an in-game relationship that you don't experience with any other type of role play. And so with that, we're going to let these two get out of here and Terminkle's going to hearth on back to his final thoughts on this awesome, awesome episode with the Wilsons. Alrighty, folks. Well, we made it safe and sound back to the cathedral here in Stormwind. And boy, Terwinkle, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Sure. So let's give the Wellisons a big thank you, sir. Thank you. You bet. So, folks, again, if you are looking to do an in-game relationship, you know, look no further than this awesome example of what an in-game relationship can look like and should be like. Again, a lot of communication going on between the two of them in and out of the game and again it's not something that is just all-encompassing but incorporates not only their role play but the guild and the, their friends around them as well and so folks if you like this episode click that like button if you'd like to comment on this episode or on any of our previous episodes please do so below let us know what you liked and what you didn't and finally if you would like to subscribe well we would love to have you just hit that subscription button today well, excellent job as always, Terwinkle. And Terwinkle, we will see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye, Terwinkle. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.